The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, and Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, of, uh, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called uh, Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembly, assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry the cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one at his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders heard it and said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge uh, with wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. When the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom, when the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. These are the words of Jesus concerning Judas in the Gospel Passion of St. Matthew. Constantius, a pagan, became emperor of Rome in the year 305 AD. As a new emperor, he found that many officials in the Roman government were Christians. These Christian officials were summoned before him. He said to them, give up your faith or give up your position. 
Most of these Christians gave up their jobs. A few cowards who didn't want to lose their position or their income gave up their faith. Then Constantius addressed them again. To those who had given up their jobs for their faith, he said, you may have your jobs back. To those who had abandoned their faith to keep their job, he said, you are dismissed. For if you would not be loyal to your Christ, you would not be loyal to me. This illustration should give us pause to consider the authenticity of our own Christian commitment. Would we choose Christ? Starting today, the Church in her sacred liturgy dedicates eight days to consider the last few hours of Jesus' life. Let us take these days very seriously. Let us accompany Jesus today as the crowds shout Hosanna. Let us be with him at the Last Supper on Holy Thursday. Let us be with him on Good Friday when that same crowd shouts, Crucify him. Then let us go first with the women, then his disciples, to see the empty tomb. In these eight days, let us consider what we would do if we had to choose Christ or financial security, if we had to choose Christ or the love of family and friends, if we had to choose Christ and martyrdom or life and some extra time on earth. Jesus Christ lived and died for us and for our salvation. Let us choose to be his loyal servants and count not the cost. Amen. <laughs>